This is Omar Nashashibi from Washington, D.C. with an update about what we're hearing with regards to the coronavirus and disruption to supply chains, distributors, and retailers, and many manufacturers in the United States. As of right now, what we're understanding is that roughly typical companies, factories at least in China, are having about one-third of their workforce returning back to factories primarily. Our understanding is many of those workers that are being permitted to return are largely local ones that did not travel throughout the country for the previous holidays in January, and therefore they're being what we call the ones that are most accessible to be able to come back and get back to work and ramp up production. Where we have heard of some cases where there's only maybe about a 10% of their workforce back, and then we've heard some others where companies specifically are receiving permits from the government to charter planes or buses to bring back workers from different regions and so that they can get operations at least back to somewhat normal levels. Our understanding also is from the trucker side. If you do have products that are being exported to China or being moved around, many of the truck drivers themselves are subject to a two-week quarantine once they make a delivery. This also adds significant delays in terms of who's able to move goods and what, and what time that it's going to take to do so. We've heard stories about perishable items from pork and beef sitting on docks with no one to transport them to their final destination. This could also cause some really slowdowns with regards to the United States and China when they reached a phase one agreement whereby China agreed to increase their purchases of U.S. exports by $200 billion over the next two years. Among those goods, there are over $32 billion worth of agricultural goods, $77 billion worth of machinery and other manufacturing components and finished goods as well. So we do see some disruption certainly occurring both directions with those imports coming from China to the United States and the goods that we've manufactured and produced that were part of the phase one deal and hopefully the Chinese were supposed to be starting to do some of those purchases now. Again, some delays there. We did hear a report recently in the last few days that a typical container coming from China is only about 30% full when it comes here into the United States. That means that there's still a significant downturn in terms of the amount of trade moving back and forth and we expect that to continue. But frankly, we also think that the worst is yet to come. In many cases, when you're looking at freight over uh, ship by sea, it could take upwards of 30 days, especially if the item is coming into the, the east coast of the United States from China. So many of those goods that were already on the water have been delivered, but we are seeing a slowdown, not to a trickle level, but it's a case by case. We definitely are seeing a slowdown of importation of items that are coming into the U.S. that is causing a delay in disruptions. We've heard certainly from General Motors and some other automotive companies that they are seeing some challenges because of their factories not being up and running in China, and they've been forced to look at other sources to prevent any major disruptions on their assembly lines. Similarly, we're un our understanding is the electronics industry in particular is getting hit quite hard with phone makers themselves. We've all heard the stories about Apple. We also understand that is going much beyond just the phone makers because many of the electronic inputs coming from China. Overall, uh, historically, our understanding is the United States imports roughly 30% of all the components and goods it consumes from China, whereas Europeans typically are only importing about 10% of the overall items coming from that country, so they might have a little bit less disruptions than we currently are facing right now. Uh, similarly, we also are understanding on the food and beverage side that, again, perishable items are having challenges, both coming both directions, and to expect some challenges moving forward in there. Uh, construction also is another industry. While many over the last year and a half have sought other choices beyond bringing in materials from China due to the tariffs that were imposed by President Trump, so some might have mitigated some of their exposure, but our understanding that we should expect some delays in construction projects, which should cause particular harm to an industry which often has to outlay a lot of its cash flow and is waiting on next stages of the project to advance before an additional payment. Well, if they can't secure the building materials, it's going to make it quite difficult for them to be able to begin and continue the construction projects on the timelines that they had previously promised. This is why at CLA we're really working with people and trying to tell the clients that CLA has to use this opportunity to identify disruptions in your supply chains. We already know certain things that are not going to be delivered on time, but more importantly, can we start looking at sourcing for you to import products from a different country, sourced domestically, while if you are able to bring in a similar product from the United States, we understand that might just be a band-aid just so you minimize the disruptions to your operations. But at the same time, we do want to explore are there other areas in Europe, other areas in Southeast Asia that could potentially supply the same item that you're currently trying to receive from China. The idea isn't to disrupt or to move and shift your supply chains, but whether we're talking about tsunamis, terrorists, or now the coronavirus, it is always important to know what your alternatives are and to be able to speak with your customers and your distributors to prevent future supply chain disruptions. 
We encourage you to reach out to your local CLA contact and learn a little bit more about how they, how they can help you.